you have an anti sanctions march that is being organized here in South Africa. Can you briefly tell the people what it's all about, when it's going to be, where, and who is invited to be there? Yes, uh, the anti sanctions march uh, will be in, in Pretoria at the, at the US Embassy uh, on the 25th of October. Uh, everybody, every Zimbabwean is invited. All organizations that want to see Zimbabwe succeed are invited. Uh, all citizens, whether political parties, we don't encourage you to wear your party gala, but we want you to come uh, so that we speak and we make it clear to the Americans that the Zidera which they passed in 2001 is still alive and is causing untold havoc to the people of Zimbabwe. So this is no longer necessary. It's not necessary at all. It was never necessary. Remember, uh, the, the, this was a unilateral uh, type of uh, decision. It was not endorsed by the United Nations. So it's an illegal sanction. We, we, we saw, we want to reiterate what Ramaphosa, the President of South Africa, His Excellency Ramaphosa, what he said at the United Nations. He said the sanctions must be lifted. And we are saying, yes, we have been saying this for the past 23 years, the sanctions must be lifted. And uh, we know the real reason why they were, they were imposed. It was because of our attitude towards our land. We took our land, and they still think that we will reverse that. We won't reverse it. It's our, it's our land. So they, they must just remove the sanctions. But the Americans have put in place some conditions on which they are going to remove the sanctions. Which conditions they say you haven't met, Zimbabwe hasn't met, opposition parties in Zimbabwe are also in agreement with America and the rest of the West that these conditions have not been met. So do you think, don't you think this is going to be another futile exercise, this anti sanctions match? It's not a futile exercise. Every fight, uh, it has to be fought, uh, even if we don't win it now, but down the line we'll win it. Uh, we are saying uh, the opposition must join us in the anti sanctions match. If they still think that uh, the reasons for the sanctions they, they will reverse the land reform, it won't happen. And uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we don't see the issue of sanctions in the same way as the opposition, because the opposition, they make profit out of uh, the sanctions. So we don't. We, we believe that uh, when sanctions are removed, the economy will grow, the economy will start producing more jobs, Zimbabweans will go back to build their country. Yeah, but on the conditions that were given, do you think you have met them? And when you go there, I hope you are going to be presenting a petition as well. Will that petition then include the groundwork that you have done or the milestones that you have achieved in meeting those uh, demands? What conditions are the conditions? The first is that Zimbabwe should go back to uh, the, uh, the democratization of the space. And the opposition is saying, and even other Zimbabweans are saying there is no democracy in Zimbabwe. They say that you also have to restructure the way you run the economy. You have to make sure that you've got sound economic policies put in there. These are some of the conditions. The first one that you mentioned... It's free media, space, and other stuff. The first one that you mentioned about the democratization of Zimbabwe. Yeah. This is... Uh, this is very funny because we, 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 America cannot lecture us on the democratization of Zimbabwe. We brought democracy to Zimbabwe. It is, uh, democracy was fought, that was brought by the liberation movements. There was no democracy before uh, 1980, uh, before... Yeah, the, but there were sanctions because there was no democracy. There were, there were sanctions against the Smith regime. Yes, and then there was democracy because we came. And then you took it away in the no, sanctions. Because not, when you came in, you no. democratized the space, although that is subjective because ZANU-PF still killed people during that particular time. And then the sanctions were lifted until 2001. So that is 21 years of no sanctions. Yes, well, but, but democracy cannot be preached by the Americans who, who actually have uh, caused and told how the rest of the world and they can't come and preach to us about democracy. Democracy, if you look at uh, Zimbabwe, it has run elections every five year cycle from 1980 up to now. Mm -hmm. We have never missed any election. And uh, now 
that's, those are democratic processes, and people have been allowed to vote. And there are opposition forces in Zimbabwe which shows that there's democracy because they are voted and they win their seats, they express themselves. So democracy to them means that Zanpev must lose the election. So if Zanpev doesn't lose the election, then there's no democracy. Uh, that is a funny way of looking at uh, the democratic process because the, the democratic process uh, must simply endorse the will of the people of Zimbabwe. If they're talking of, they're thinking of uh, changing regimes through these uh, processes, then they must just wait to see what the people of Zimbabwe say. The people of Zimbabwe are the only ones who can change regimes. Yeah, but elections alone in the free opposition space cannot be defined as democracy because democracy also includes human rights, and that includes uh, a free media, it includes uh, freedom of expression, it includes freedom of assembly, it includes uh, human rights, and human rights include uh, access to water, it includes access to uh, education, it includes a number of other rights. So would you say just because Zimbabwe is holding elections every five years, the opposition parties are spiraling all over, therefore there is democracy, when these same opposition parties are claiming that you are harassing them, you are blocking them, you are assaulting their members. Uh, like I said, uh, Zanpev does not endorse violence. Uh, if any body is assaulted, they should report to the police. But the, what the, I want to... They reported danger. He was arrested. The police officer was harassed. And I'm sure danger is out right now. Yeah, but what I'm saying is uh, those issues that they, 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 they raise, they don't cancel out the fact that uh, there is democracy in Zimbabwe. If, if you talk of the media, there's, there are many media houses in Zimbabwe. There's plurality of media houses in Zimbabwe. They are allowed. You are a journalist and you practice there in Zimbabwe. And, and, and I was hounded uh, out. I don't know whether you're hounded out by Zanpia or you're hounded out by other issues which have nothing to do with Zanpia. It was Zanpia, but let's leave that aside. And then, um, when you, you've already stated that America cannot lecture Zimbabwe about democracy, which means that you are not ready to meet the conditions that they set for you. Is that what you're saying? No, look, Zimbabwe is a sovereign state, and we run our country according to our constitution. Mm -hmm. America must understand our constitution if they want to see how we are going to manage our affairs. And America has no business creating a law about us uh, when we, we don't have a law which is called uh, something in the U.S., uh, whatever, we, because we are only concerned about our citizens. They must concern themselves with their own citizens and leave us alone. So that gives us a deadlock that America wants these conditions. You don't want to meet the conditions, but you want the sanctions lifted. So why then don't we do away with America and deal with people who didn't place any sanctions against Zimbabwe? Because it becomes futile to say, I want this lifted, but these people have got conditions that they will consider before they lift. But you still go to them and say, we haven't met, we're not going to meet the conditions. We are, exposing, we are exposing their hypocrisy. They go around the world saying they are pushing democracy, but they are interfering with our processes. We will continue to tell them to lift the, the sanctions, but we won't listen to their voices about what we should do with our country. We have a country to run, they have their country to run, and we, we will continue to tell them that they must stop interfering with our affairs. Uh, yes, we are busy doing business with other uh, uh, countries, but America continues to interfere because of their hegemony around international institutions. And we think that uh, they must put, lift that hold. We are happy that the international community is now realizing the, the, the diabolic hand of America in all the affairs of other countries, and they are now saying no more to a unipolar world. They are now talking about a multipolar world where America does not uh, victimize weaker nations. Okay, and then there is this raging debate which people are holding. I held such debates as well as to whether there are sanctions against Zimbabwe uh, or if they are affecting the ordinary Zimbabwean. And there is very little literature coming from those who are for the removal of sanctions. Are you, in terms of literature, going to be furnishing people with how these sanctions are hitting the world in Zimbabwe? Yes, during that, that sanctions match, we will uh, present a petition 
to the American embassy and how we, in that petition, will spell out exactly how these sanctions are affecting us. There are people, yes, I agree with you, that don't understand how these sanctions work. We will try to educate them how these sanctions work. There are some who say that these are targeted sanctions. Uh, how do you target a public institution, which is meant to drive economic change in Zimbabwe and say you are not targeting individuals? This is very unfair and it's, it's, it's creating havoc in our, our body. And will the petition be made public? After we hand it over to the American uh, embassy, yes, we'll make okay. it public. Um, well, I hope you have it, let you hear it, ladies and gentlemen. We have come to the end of this show, whereby we were talking to ZANU PF South Africa spokesperson Sununguli Walter Mbongolwani. We welcome your thoughts, your comments, or even any questions that you might have if it means bringing him back to the studio, then we'll request that he comes back because these sort of engagements are going to be eye-openers for us. There are issues that we are fighting over because either we don't understand well or we choose to deliberately twist for political purposes. So we're going to continue to have these discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you. Thank you very much.